well, take a look at the starting grid that rolls across the top of your screen, and we'll talk Grand Sports storylines. Well, feeling jaded, Jade Buford in the number 55 ass and just scored his record sixth pole position of the year, but he hasn't seen a podium yet. Can that team turn it around? And there you hear it on the radio, green, green, green. We're racing in Kansas. Jay Buford from the pole immediately ducks down, trimming the grass around the inside. Here comes the championship leader, Nick Longy to the inside as well as Brian Hardcarter and the number 14 machine, the black and white Nissan getting a little bit wide there, really tightens up Dorsey. And here comes the ST start on the right side of the screen. You'll see the street tuners, they also underway. In just a few laps, Grand Sport will be back on top of Street Tuner. Then it's going to get really wild. Wild already is the number 13 Rum Bum Porsche with a problem. And Brian Heidkotter in the in the Nissan, good jump right there, got through. Paul Dallalana, oh, what a stop! Oh, in a spin. It's the 61. 48 machine, I believe. He yes, got help. Line car. Yeah, he got helped by the 61 Mustang, unfortunately, I believe. Charles Espenlaub there in the four line machine getting turned is. And we still have a long way to go. Calvin, you said it two and a half hours, but being pulled off to the side, you almost wonder if he had a mechanical issue. No mechanical issue with the front runners because right now the BMW of Paul Dallalana really beginning to put pressure on that white Aston Martin. And they're searching for grip. Look at Heidkotter come back. Wasn't the best of stars, but he's showing some power there with that Nissan. Tucks to the inside on Paul Dallalana. Nick Longy in the rumba machine right behind them. Talk about this banking for a minute. They're not used to it. It's between 17 degrees down there on the bottom to 20 on the top. Here we see the pole sitter still out front, but Ooh. it's getting really tight there. Matt Bell looks to the inside in that Camaro there, the Stevenson machine. Yeah, but big flame out of one of those cars in that brake zone. I think it could have just been a full fuel tank that were, was venting fuel onto the hot exhaust or brake. And the 61 in after that contact that we saw early on, it's Jack Roush Jr. behind the wheel. Chris? Yeah, initially I was thinking he was going to come in with a flat tire. The team looking at both the right front and the left front, but I'm thinking we got some suspension damage on this left front. As uh, Once the car went up in the air, the crew members started shaking that wheel back and forth, and it definitely looked pretty loose in there. Well, Calvin, you talked about other teams that just couldn't find luck, like the Freedom Autosport team. Jack Roush Jr., his teammate Billy Johnson, they won the opening round at Daytona International Speedway, but have not been back to victory lane since. And you'd think coming here is a similar type of racetrack because Heidkotter looks to the inside on Jade Buford, tucks it on the inside as they go through the next car portion of this racetrack. Can he hold it all the way down into the break zone? But Nissan is slippery. It's got a lot of top end. You see it every time at the end of the straightaway making that move. That's the car I think I'd like to have right now if it can sustain that kind of deal throughout the race. It should have the advantage on that straight line. You said cars you wanted to drive. Here's a battle for the lead, the 55 of Jay Buford, our pole sitter, Brian Heitkotter outside. Here in the 15 car and that hit again. If you, Larry will tell you exactly where it's at. So <laughs> one of those drivers is going to get well and truly chewed out when he gets back and uh, jumps out of the race car today. And did you notice where all of the incidents were? Not where on the, the bank. Yeah. They're all down on the infield where these guys are road racers that you'd think that they'd uh, have it sorted out, but they're making mistakes on their home turf. And you see the speed differential as Jade Buford in the white Aston Martin, the 55 goes past some of the ST cars. You saw the 198 Honda of Chris Pushkar. That's last year's car. They're down on straight line speed just a little bit, but doing a good job holding on to the 23 white BMW just in front of them. And the thing that's important about Mike Lamara in that 23 BMW running seventh, they are trying to get back in this championship. They run second in ST right now, and they need a good finish this weekend. Yeah, but they're right in the thick of this point, Chase. I mean, a couple of jump out in front of that, but the 196 beats them all out. Talk about jumping. The green flag is out. And who's looking for a jump? John Edwards in that red, blue, and yellow Camaro trying to get Whoa. around. Oh, oh that left Shelby. door open there for the 51 car. Shelby Blackstock trying to take a move there to the front. He Great job, Shelby Blackstock. They did. did get through. No contact on anybody's part there. Oh, and you're right on board the 45 without Carter. That's the championship leader to the outside, the Rum Bum Porsche. Great job by Matt Plum there. He was feeling the traffic. You just see him making a little bit more room for Al Carter to get through that turn three complex. Oh, a lot of bumping and rubbing through there. That reminds me of the infield of Daytona right there. The International Horseshoe looks just the same. Seeing some smoke still from that 46 machine, Brian. I see some damage to the right rear wheel well of the number 13 Rum Bum Porsche. Look at this into turn six. 
51. Shelby Blackstock, spectacular move up the inside. Buford still holds down the point. And Buford used to be teammates with Shelby Blackstock, who took the lead away from him. Now he's wrestled it back. And, of course, you got John Edwards in that Camaro. Edwards took it in there really deep, but there's no way around this hairpin. So these guys are going to learn how to race, run this racetrack. And there's a lot of guys here this weekend, like John Edwards, are on double duty. So this is a great, really, testing ground for them to get ready for the Rolex race a little bit later today. Aston Martin, Mustang, Camaro, BMW, Porsche, the top five. Jade Buford continuing to lead impressive run in his Aston Martin from Kansas Speedway. Al Carter's explosion of the engine of his BMW has brought out the full course caution and has brought out pit stops. The 55 is in, Chris. Jade Buford bringing the 55 and handing over to Scott Maxwell at the top of your screen. Going to do fuel and right now just left side tires on that Aston Martin. We did right side tires on the previous stop. Larry Holt telling me that they're about 15 laps short, so they will have to come back in. Greg, on the bottom. After a stellar qualifying run for Jade Buford in the 55 Aston Martin and a good run throughout the race, Scott Maxwell has taken it over, was battling for the lead, and now the Aston off song. It's hard to believe. Six pole positions for Jade Buford, which is a record in one season. Yeah, he hasn't seen a podium. We saw Maxwell there all over the back end of Matt Plum looking for a podium, if not better. Aston Martin looking for their first victory with that Vantage, and uh, they just seem to be bitten this year. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that car was even running. I think he had enough momentum to get it back to pit lane, but I think he was uh, coasting on in. You can understand why. They've had one podium finish this year, and they've had some great runs, but they've had some awful finishes as well. And you talk about bad luck. There's the 55, and all we heard on the radio was talking about cycling the master. One of the things, Dorsey, about having experience and the experience that, well, I hate to admit it, that the three of us have up here. We ran at a time when there weren't as many computers on the cars.